Boy, I, yeah, why I go into the field, it's, um, I think that's what got me into geology way back when I was a college student. It was like, oh wow, I can combine camping and hiking and, 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 and my academic life or my, my life. It's like, wow, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Science is really a process. It's a way of thinking. It, it's not a body of knowledge. And that's what a lot of people have, kind of their perspective coming out of high school. It's, here's a bunch of stuff I gotta memorize. And um, we really actively, all of us here, try to fight that and say, no, science is it's really fun. And, and it's a process of learning things. And it's not that different from history or social studies. You try to take fragmentary evidence and piece together a story that, that makes sense. So, so why is there this long line of violence? Um, at first it was moving the north, and then it switched and started moving northwest. I didn't know that this was a geology class when I started, and when I found out it was, I was like really happily surprised. <laughs> The class that you've been filming is called Earth Resources. It's partly what might traditionally be called an environmental geology class, where you look at environmental hazards or geological hazards. Partly an introductory geology, so I teach the students a little bit more about plate tectonics and how the Earth works. And then we go on to look at water, well, various resources. And I pose the question to the students, are we living dangerously on this planet in that we're using up our resources, either using them up or using them unwisely? I don't want to have to give up all my comforts to save the environment, but I don't want to kill the environment. So I think a balance is what we need to aim for. I'm actually not focusing on earth science or geology or any science. I'm pretty much focusing on art, but I still love this class because it's relating our world. So I may not want to focus on that and make my life out of that, but I still care about it. So it's nice to learn about it. <laughs> We try to get out into the field, and that's a big part of it, to set up real world problems or challenges to give to the students, uh, and then go out in the field and, and try to solve them. I gave them a scenario that I just got a phone call from a Hampshire alum. She wants to build her house near the Fort River. She wants us to help her figure out how close she can be and still be safe. So I intentionally sort of set these up and the students laugh and chuckle at it because now they've had several scenarios where a Hampshire alum has called to ask us to do something. But I think it puts them in a perspective like, okay, here's a problem that we need to resolve, we need to figure out how to do it, and we need to then communicate our results to a person and then they can get very creative and successful in writing up those projects that way. Wait, these are meters, not centimeters, right? Yeah, these are meters. Oh, he wants us to start at 20. Being out in the field is actually, I think, the most important part. You know, we spend a lot of time in the field dealing with real data, hands-on numbers, real rivers, real mountains, uh, real rocks, things that we can actually pick up, hold, touch, and really experience as what they are as, as a piece of our environment. The scientific process is, is a process of just objective reasoning and learning. For me, that's what makes it fun, is, is going out and trying to solve problems, come up with some answers, and then if you're lucky, you, you go outside in some nice places and, and enjoy the environment while you're doing it. Mm -hmm.